Greetings today in that name that's far above every name. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Good to see you here in the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church today. We welcome everyone. And you that's listening out in the radio listening audience, we most certainly appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church here in Athens, Georgia. Now this is Preacher Edward speaking. We're hoping during the hour coming up we can be a real inspiration to everyone. And just good to see every one of you. May the good Lord bless you. Deacon Lars Moon, way back there in the back, and those young people behind you, tell them to cool it back there. If they can't do that, just pick a songbook up and throw it back over your head. I know it'll land in the right spot, and that'll take care of the situation, okay? Well, listen to the preacher, look at the preacher, hear what he has to say, and we'll get along just fine. Take your Bible today and turn to Genesis chapter 5. And we're going to read some there. And I'm going to speak on the subject, He that walks with God. He that walks with God. I'm going to find out something about that. Now this message and singing today will be on tape number 303. Tape number 303. You can get the tape for a gift of $3.00. And we'll be glad to send it to you. Just say, Preacher, send me tape number 303 or send me the tape, He That Walks With God. Now I have it, 300, 300 messages on cassette tape listed. I have many others, but 300 lift, listed. You can write in and get a list of our cassette tape. And I, I know you'd enjoy it. You get it for shut-ins and so forth. And so you just uh, write in and get them. My mailing address is Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia, 30603, is the zip code number. Now, some of you dear people, you're really going to miss it if you don't plan to go with us on our next tour to the Holy Land because of the great plan, the great planning of the tour, going to Israel and England riding on the safest airline, Swiss Airs, leaving out of Atlanta, flying across from Atlanta. And if you're even thinking about it, you ought to really get out of some good deep thinking and make up your mind to go with us to the Holy Land. Now's the time to get your name on the list, right in. I'll send you a brochure, all right in and I'll call in, tell you about it, come by to see me, I'll be glad to sit down and tell you about it. Because I'm, I'm really anxious that you go. Some of you out in the radio listening audience, you ought to plan to go. Plan to send your pastor. What a great thing you could do for him. No greater Christmas gift or anniversary gift could you give to your pastor or your pastor and his wife than to send them to the Holy Land. So you think about it. Right now is the time to get stirred up about it and do something about it. Now turn to Genesis chapter 5, will you please? If you're not getting our daily broadcast, if you will tune to this station where you're now listening at 12 o'clock noon, Monday through Saturday, you can get the daily broadcast, Monday through Saturday, every day. Now, for the benefit of some of you that don't know, I've been on the radio in my 40th year out of Athens broadcasting the gospel. Somebody tuned in and heard me the other day and said, I said, I'm 50 uh, some odd years old. I could ever remember a time when I wasn't listening to that man on the radio. Well, I thank God that he's let me stay on the radio in my 40th year, telling the story of Jesus every day. It's of God. God placed me there. God's kept me there. God's raised up those to help us pay for the bills. And when we come to the judgment seat of Christ, we'll be rewarded together. I hope God will let me stay on the air till Jesus comes. Oh, he carries me home, one or the other. Now, Genesis chapter 5, and let's begin reading with verse 22. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. 
And all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not for God. Now we find in the book of Amos, chapter 3, and verse 3, where he said, Can two walk together except they be agreed? And I'm speaking to you on the subject, He that walks with God. Now, if you expect to walk with God, you got to do something. you got to agree with God mainly. You must do that. You can't walk with Him unless you agree with Him. You must bow your knee to the Word of God. What God said in this book is God's Word. And you must uh, believe it in order to walk with God. Now, this past week, we've had a good meeting. Brother Roy Goodson has preached his heart out, and he's preached to our hearts. You have enjoyed the great preaching. You've enjoyed the good old beef steaks and the chicken, the honey, and, the, and everything you got in those messages. But it's time again now to settle down to cornbread and peas and onions and squashes and whatnot and get right down to old good old backbones and, and good old uh, uh, country ham or whatnot. Get right down to it this morning. And so we're not going to pass out any desserts out of the message. We're going to give you what thus saith the Lord God. Now we know in the Bible and according to history that if you want to get people stirred up, then you want need to get people coming to God. We don't see much of that this day and time. And there's something else that stirs people up, and that is someone coming back to God. When someone gets out of fellowship with the Lord, and, and when they come back into fellowship with God, that stirs the other saints. And then, of course, one major thing that really stirs people up is Someone walking with God. Now, it doesn't take the whole entire church walking with God to see things accomplished. Now, if you can get just a few to walk with God, it becomes contagious. Others join in and they get in step and they begin to walk with God. And the only way we'll see the church grow, see other souls saved, see people brought back in the fellowship is for some to walk with God. And many times things have been accomplished by just one individual saying, by the grace of God, I'm going to walk with God. I don't care what others do. Now, don't start looking around you and looking at others and see what they're doing. You'll get out of step. Now, regardless of what others do, if you determine you're going to set your face like a flint and begin to walk with God regardless of what others do, if they wobble, if they fall by the wayside, you're going to walk right on with God. He that walks with God. My, what great things are in store for that person that walks with God at the end of the journey. You're headed down a long, long road. And at the end of that road, you're going to face God at the judgment seat of Christ. And if you walk down the middle of that road, stay out of the ditch. Pay no attention to what others think or say and move right on for God. That's great things waiting for you down the way. There's a man one time riding down the street and, and he had a big old dog behind his wagon walking right down behind his master. That big old dog looked at the back of his master sitting upon that wagon and just moved right on behind the wagon. Ever little old feist and rat taran. Hound and whatnot came out barking at him as they went from about house after house, come out growling and snapping and barking. That big old dog never took his eyes off his master. He paid no attention to those little flea bait out there yapping at him. He just kept his eyes right on his master, stayed right behind that wagon and went right on down the street. Now you got to do that if you plan to walk with God. That's the only thing that's going to really count when you come to life's end. Did you walk with God? How far did you walk with God? Or did you turn aside and fall in the ditch? Or did you turn to look at the other little dogs barking on the side of the road as you came along? People yapping and criticizing and running you down and saying things about you. Did you turn to back to yap back at them? The big dog following the wagon never one time turned his head to bark at any of those little dogs barking at him on sight of the street. Now, had he done that, he'd have been back there barking at them, probably got in a fight, 
and it all got scratched up. His master would have been away down the road. You can't do that. You close your ears to what people might say about you and keep your eyes on the master. Keep your eyes on the goal. Set your face like a flint and keep moving on walking with God. Oh, you say now, preacher Edwards, I would walk with God, but you know, so and no, no, no. That's up to you to walk with God. So and so can't do a thing about that. There'll be no excuse inside of God. I can't stand before God and say, God, I would have walked with you down the straight and narrow path, but you know what so and so did, and you know how they acted, and, and they criticized me, and they run me down. They disapproved of me, and therefore, I didn't God say that's no excuse. Nobody has any excuse whatsoever for not walking with God. Now God expects us to do so. He that walks with the Lord is going to reap the great benefits at the end of life's journey. And you'll carry somebody along with you because somebody is watching you every step of the way as you walk with God. Now we find in the Bible this man Enoch number seven from Adam, the seventh from Adam, which is a number of completeness. Of course, he walks with God, and that number seven is not without great significance. The Bible says he walked with God. It was not because God took him. Here's a man that had no Bible. Here's a man that did not have a church house on every corner. Here's a man that didn't have a lot of Christian people or saved people to fellowship with him. Here's a man that had to walk alone, just him and God. Now today we have good Christian people, thank God for them. We like to fellowship with God's people, I do, you do if you're in fellowship with God. You like to fellowship with God's people and you love to go to the house of God. I don't know any place I'd rather go than the house of God because there I can fellowship with God's people be in the presence of people that love the Lord, enjoy the good singing, enjoy the teaching and the preaching, and it's wonderful to be in God's house. I've never figured out why some people would rather sit at home and call themselves saved instead of being in the house of God. On Sunday, I would be miserable if I tried to sit at home and not go to the house of God unless I was absolutely sick. I mean, too sick to go. And so I'd want to be there, and I'd be miserable if I couldn't be there. And all of God's people should be that way. But you'll find people finding all kind of excuses that they use, and none of them will hold water. All excuses are just little lies, really, to tell you the truth. Started with Adam and Eve back in the garden, you know. Adam said, this woman you gave me, Lord, she's responsible, and that's why I did it. And that woman said, now, Lord, I'll tell you, it's this old serpent here. He's a bird that got me off track. And on and on, they began to make excuses. Excuses are as old as the hills. They started with old man Adam. And every one of you have that Adamic nature and you're very prone to put up some kind of measly excuse about why you're not walking with God. You're going to blame it on somebody. You blame it on the preacher. You blame it on the deacons, the teachers. You blame it on your wife or your husband. You blame it on your job. You blame it on somebody. You come up with some kind of excuse and you don't have any excuse. If it ever dawns upon you that no Christian under heaven has any excuse whatsoever for not walking with God. Now you can walk with God. I don't care how many you have against you. I don't care how hard people fight against you, what they say about you, what they tell on you, what they do toward you. Beloved, every one of us can walk with God. I'll tell you before God today, I don't know a preacher in Athens, Georgia, that's been cussed and discussed and fussed on and slandered and lied on and criticized any more than this preacher that you hear right now. Beloved, that's true. I've been here some 40 some odd years. 
preaching hell, fire, and damnation, telling people they're going to hell if they don't get saved, telling people it's wrong to drink liquor, it's wrong to go to moving picture shows, it's wrong to watch these old dirty uh, pictures on your TV, it's wrong to go out here to worldly pleasures and neglect the house of God and neglect the church when you need to be there and lay out on revivals when you should be there. I've told people that was wrong and that's sinful and they put up some kind of excuse but they have no excuse. And for that reason, people, they criticize me and, and they talk about me and, and they say things against me, you know. But I don't mind that. That doesn't bother me. That adds to my reward. Jesus said rejoice because great will be your reward in heaven. So when people start criticizing you, then, of course, praise God. Start shouting the victory. Jump up, clap your hands, click your heels together. And if they say, well, what are you doing that for? I say, well, God said that when people talked about me just to praise the Lord and rejoice because great is my reward in heaven, I'm just praising God about my reward. Just go ahead and criticize me a little bit more because I'd like to have a little bigger reward anyway. Don't let people's criticism phase you one iota. Go right on and serve God. Shake it off like water poured on a duck's back and move on for God. If I'd allowed that to stop me back yonder 45 years ago, I wouldn't be preaching the gospel today. I've been preaching the gospel some 45 years. And if I'd have stopped back then, I'd have missed about 44 and a half years of preaching. I'm glad I didn't let it hinder me. And by the grace of God, I'm not going to let anything hinder me. I'm going to move on and walk with God. That's what I want to do. Now, walking with God means spiritual uh, uh, progress. Any person that walks with God is going to become stronger and stronger, stronger spiritually, finer and sweeter Christian in the Lord, love God even more and more, and love God's people. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 1, you ought to walk to please God so you would abound more and more. Do you want to become strong? You want to grow in grace and knowledge? Walk with God, and the Bible says you are bound more and more. He that walketh with God abounds more and more. How can two walk together except they be agreed? You must agree with God. You might not understand everything God has in that book, but you must bow your knee and say it's God's word. I believe it. I agree with the Lord. And, of course, in order to walk with God, you must uh, really to keep your sins confessed up because the Bible says in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7, if you walk in the light as he's in the light, you have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanses you from all sin. See, when you walk with God real close to God, that's not enough space there. The devil can get between you and God. Now, when the devil gets between you and God's, when you begin to walk way over toward the other side of the road. Now, going down the middle of the road right with God, the devil can't get between you. You're right there with God. But you begin to lag behind, and you begin to drift toward the ditch on either side, or even try to run ahead. You open up all kind of space for the devil to get in there between you and God. But as long as you walk real close to God, right up under his wings, as it were, in real close fellowship with God, the devil can't get his dirty feet between you and God. Now, when the devil sticks his dirty head between you and God, it's when you have allowed yourself to drift away from God. And if he can get you on completely away from God and shove you in the ditch, and rob you of your testimony and fellowship and reward, that's exactly what he wants to do. Now, God may call upon you many times to walk with him when you'll have to give up some things on this earth to do it. We don't like to give up things. God said to Abraham, he said, Abraham, he said, yes, sir. I see you here and there, the Chaldees. You have, uh, people worship idols here. But Abraham, I have a job I want you to do. What is that, Lord? Uh, I want you to walk with me. I'm going to send you across the river Euphrates, and I'm going to change you into Hebrew. You're an Assyrian now, but I'm going to change you into Hebrew. And whenever you cross the river Euphrates, that means 
Hebrew changed to Hebrew. You're going to become a Hebrew and you become head of the Hebrew nation. And Abraham said, now, Lord, I, uh, you mean I leave my kin folks here? Yes. I leave my little farm? Yes. Leave my uh, 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 things here that I've grown up, uh, vineyards and so forth? Yes. Abraham, if you want to walk with me, there's some great things waiting for you. Now, if you want to stay tied here near the Chaldees, over here around Iraq, where you are, and you want to hang around here and uh, stay there and uh, worship these old idols and, and so forth, that, that's up to you, Abraham. But, but you can walk with me. I have a job for you. And he said, Abraham, I'm going to make of thee a great nation. And I'm going to call you Abram. Your name is Abram, means um, uh, the father of many. And Abraham started out and somebody said, oh, uh, hey, mister, what is your name? He said, my name's Abram. Or he said, well, Abram means the father of many, many children. Uh, oh, where's your children? He said, don't have any. He said, that man must be crazy. Hey, his name implies he, he has children, but he, he doesn't have any. And then he moves on and God said, I'm going to call you Abraham. Not only do you have many children, but you're going to be the father of many nations. I'm going to make your seed like the stars of heaven, your spiritual seed, your, your, your physical seed like the sand of the seashore. Somebody said, old man, said, what is your name? He said, Abraham means I'm a father of many nations. Uh, where are they? Well, I don't have them. Uh, where's your children? I don't have any. Oh, that old man, he's been out in the sun too long. In other words, he left his head off uh, too long out there in that hot sand. Listen at him. Talking about being the father of many children and the father of great nations and don't even have any young. The old man, something wrong with him somewhere. But he believed God and God said, Abraham, cross the river Euphrates, walk with me and I'll move you into the land of Canaan. And God carried the old man in the land of Canaan. And God blessed him, said, all of this land I'm going to give you, you just walk with me. Later on, God gave him a child, when his wife is too old for childbearing. She is 90 and he's 100. And then through that child Isaac came the great nations and came our Savior. Abraham walked with God and he believed God. Now you can't walk with God according to your feelings. Now you must walk with God according to his promise. You must walk with God according to faith. Sometimes people say, well, I one time, you know, uh, I enjoyed things and don't just feel too good about it today. Well, God didn't say whosoever feeleth. God said whosoever believeth. You must believe God and let God take care of the feelings. Now this man, Enoch, walked with God. He that walketh with God. But there must have been something that generated this. There must have been something that caused old man Enoch to decide one day that he had walked with God. Now something may have to come along to cause you to decide that from here on in you walk with God. There's many of us done got far more years behind us than we'll ever see in front of us. Many of us done gone away over the hill headed down on the other side and seem like can't put on the brakes. My wife said this morning, said, my, I can't hardly believe it. In about three months, I'll be another year older. Well, these things just keep moving up on us. Nothing we can do about it. And we're moving on. And many of us way over the hill. Our best years gone. They're behind us. But let me ask you the great question. What have you done with God during those years? Oh, you say, now, preach, there was, I haven't walked with God very much. I wobbled around, stayed in the ditch most of the time, stayed way back in the left field part of the time, and, and uh, just wobbling around and, and making excuses. Really hadn't done anything much for God, hadn't walked with Him too much. Well, you're going to be sorry when you face Him at the judgment seat. God's going to check out your walking with Him. And God wants you to walk with Him, and you can walk with Him. And let me give you some good news. I don't care how old you are. Beloved, God can restore the years that the canker worms have eaten. That's consolation to me. As I look back over the years where maybe I could have been doing more for God and it grieves my heart, and I begin to pray about it, and God says, Son, if you let me, I restore the years that the canker worms have eaten. Would you like for God to restore those years that the canker worms have eaten? 
He'll do it. God will do it. God, what are you saying, preach? I'm saying God will take you right now where you are, and you'll be surprised what God can do for you and with you and through you till you come to the end of your journey. A lot of people accomplish more for God in five years than some people do in 50 years. A short period of time of serving God is not an incomplete time. Maybe that's the time limit that God wants you to really do business. Somebody says, well, that man, he's been uh, preaching the gospel for 70 years. Well, that's good. That's good. Maybe there's another man got saved and, and he didn't serve God for 10 years. And uh, he, he w walked with God for 10 years and he did what God wanted him to do. What's he going to get at the judgment seat of Christ? A full reward. How about that man that's served God 50 years? What's he going to get at the end? A full reward if he served God 50 years in his fullness. So why don't you remember God can restore the canker worms, what the canker worms have eaten, and God can nail down a spike and you can start from right there and do a job for God. Are you in a fool around, drag your feet, wobble around, get behind, fall in a ditch, blame everybody else, come to the end of life's journey, and there'll be nothing for you. That's something that caused Enoch to get started, to serve in God. The Bible says he lived six and five years, begat Methuselah. Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years. No, old Enoch just kind of wobbled around and kind of wishy-washy until that boy was born. And when that boy came into his home, after his birth, he walked with God for 300 years without a break. Now, one reason he began to walk with God when Methuselah came, God said, I want you to name him Methuselah, signifying when he's dead, it should be sent. In other words, God says, now, Enoch, listen to me. I'm going to put something in your ears. I'm giving you a boy, and this is what you name him. Name him Methuselah, oldest recorded man you'll find in the book of God. 969 years did he live. But God said, now listen, listen, Enoch. He said, now when this man dies, I'm going to send the flood. I'm going to destroy the human race. With the exception of knowing his family, I, I'm, I'm going to send my wrath upon this earth. It grieved me at the sin of mankind on the earth. And when this boy dies, when this baby I'm going to give you dies, that's it. That's the end of the journey. So I want you to know that. Evidently, old man Enoch, he said, well, I better start walking with God. That boy may die just any time. And he started walking with God when that boy was born. And he'd go look at him every few days and say, son, you're in pretty good health. God said, when you're dead, man, his wrath's coming. I want to be sure that you're doing all right. And I want to be sure I'm walking with God. A few years passed by and, and old brother Enoch kept on walking with God. And the boy looked pretty healthy. And Enoch said, well, you're looking pretty good, son. But I never tell when you might die. I'm going to get a little closer to God. And for 300 years, we find that he walked with God. And the Bible said, when he's dead, it shall be sin. The old man Enoch, he walked with God for 300 years after that boy was born. And, and he just kept walking and walking and walking and, and walked in his golden slippers right into heaven one day. But the old boy was still alive on the earth. That had nothing to do with Enoch, but it had something to do with the time element. And that boy lived 969 years. And when old man Methuselah died, being 969 years old, God opened the floodgate and the flood came. God said, name him Methuselah. And when he's dead, it shall be sent. And God waited 969 years, being merciful to the human race, but they kept getting worse and worse. And when the old man came, time to die, old man Methuselah, 969 years, God said, I'm going to take him out. I'm going to do what I said. I'll send the flood. And he lifted the floodgates and the flood came. Read Genesis chapter 5, verses 25, verses 28 and 29, and, and Genesis chapter 7, verse 11. And you'll find out it's 969 years from time he was born to the flood came. Let me give you this verse of Scripture. 
Old man Enoch began to walk with God. Whenever that son came, that prompted him. And if you have children, great is your responsibility. God will hold you responsible for those children. And if anybody ought to walk with God, it should be families that have children. Because they may go to hell because you didn't. Everybody should walk with God that knows God, but you have a little more responsibility. And then Enoch said, uh, this, old, this boy, he, God's given me, he may die any time, and I'm going to walk with God. And he did. That son prompted him to walk with God. Now watch this verse of Scripture. We find in Romans chapter 2 and verse 4, the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Enoch said, God's been so good to me. Give me a big old fat healthy boy, and I'm going to walk with God. And for no other reason under heaven you ought to repent and walk with God is because God's been so good to you. Have you ever sat down and just thought about how good God is to you? Have you? Have you ever sat down and just praised the Lord that you're in, in good health? Now, I know most of us, we're going to have some kind of ailment along, to be sure. But uh, these, it's natural that these bodies grow older. But listen to me. Have you ever just thanked God for the blessings of good food that you have to eat and your means of transportation and, and thank God for your family. We haven't had a death in our immediate family. Lord knows when. I'm talking about a real immediate family. Lost my mother and daddy, of course. Lost a brother back yonder know, many years ago. But I'm talking about in the Edwards family, my children, my grandchildren, my in-laws. And in my family, God's been good to me. We haven't followed one of the bodies to the grave. We don't know when we may have to. Uh, they may follow me, my wife, whatnot. We don't know. But I, I thank God that uh, we haven't had a death so far. Some of you haven't. Some have. God bless you. But remember this. You ought to thank God for his goodness and whatever happens. Amen. And God takes one of your loved ones home. Just say, Lord, we can't understand it, but you know why. And it's going to redound to your glory. And we go in to walk with you. Don't ever, don't ever get embittered against God. Don't rebel against God because uh, something happens in your family. That's what the devil wants you to do. I can stand you the next hour and tell you people I've had to deal with that became embittered against God because they lost a loved one. That's foolish. That's exactly what the devil wants you to do. God's concerned about you and God wants to help you. He that walketh with God. Now, I didn't finish the message. The Lord willing, I'm going to continue this message tonight. I didn't finish it. I'll continue it tonight, the Lord willing. I hope you'll be here. And uh, but we're going to close in just a moment. And if you're not right with the Lord, why don't you get right? I trust you will. It's pointed to men once to die, and after that, the judgment. Let us all stand our feet, please. And we're going to ask De Debbie to come. We'll have an instrumental. And we'll give you a chance to respond. Our Father, thank you for your wonderful word. Lord, every one of us ought to be willing to walk with you. He that walketh with God is the one that God will bless and use and to be so glad at the end of life's journey. Help us, God. Stir us up to walk with you as individuals and then as a group. God, speak to hearts here and in the radio listening audience. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. Debbie, play for us. If you're here unsaved, if you're here backslidden, if you're here and you want to join the church, then come down here and let us help you. If any other reason that you feel you ought to come, come on down here and let us help you. Would you do it? While we wait, maybe you want to come on Something that our preacher preached last week. You didn't respond, but you want to respond today. Maybe something I said this morning. Maybe something God has spoken to you about. Would you come? 